Hi, my name is Brian Freisinger, and this is a V-Ray tutorial for the V-Ray Light Select Render Element. So what I've done here is created a quick scene with a simple three-point light setup, a sphere, and a ground plane, as we can see. Uh, the first thing I want to draw attention to is uh, I named my lights very specifically. Uh, when you're using the V-Ray Light Select tool, it's not necessary, but it is highly recommended to name these so that you can manage it both internally within Maya and externally when you're compositing in a package such as Nuke or After Effects. It's really handy to know the names of your lights to make sense for when you're working. Um, if you leave them at the default, it can get very confusing later on. So try to name your lights something that makes sense to you uh, within your scene file. So the first thing we'll look at here is the V-Ray render settings. Um, first thing I'm going to do is go to the V-Ray common tab and make sure that I have my use V-Ray frame buffer clicked on. This is really important later so that we can actually go in and look at the different passes that we're going to be extracting to make sure that things are working right. It will also allow us to look at things in linear color space or sRGB color space. It's far more powerful than the one that comes with Maya and if you're using V-Ray you should definitely be using the V-Ray frame buffer. The second thing we want to go look at here is our color mapping. Uh, it, by default it's set to linear mul multiply and this will do um, a linear render but to get a better linear render out of this uh, with better blacks and less noise you want to use the recommended settings which is a gamma 2.2 and don't affect colors clicked on. Next we're going to go over to our render elements and we see ahead of time here I've created the GI pass, the lighting pass, reflection pass, and the specular pass and real easy just simply go over to the pass you want um, double click on it I've created another specular very simple so for compositing purposes right now um, this scene file is basically nothing more than a highly re reflective and specular sphere a ground plane there's nothing ref uh, refractive in here there's no glass there's no subsurface scattering so really a uh, global illumination lighting pass reflection and specular pass will combine to give me the same thing as a beauty pass so we'll go back now and look at the V-Ray frame buffer. So this is the render that I did previously. And what we have here is, again, just looking at my render settings, global illumination, lighting, reflection, and specular. You can see they're all related in here. So we can look at the global illumination. We can look at the lighting, specular, and the reflection. And the combination of all of these gives us our beauty pass. Now the problem is, I can't separate my lighting out currently, nor can I uh, separate out my specular currently. And from a compositing st standpoint, this is something I would want to separate so I could have individual control over each one of my lights and over the light specularity. So how do we do this? That comes into play here with the V-Ray light select element. So I'll simply double click on that and we now have the V-Ray RE light select. Right now, if I was to re-render this, it would do nothing. This, right now, doesn't have any relationship to the lights. It doesn't understand which light it needs to pull to. So that's the purpose of this tutorial. How do we get this light select element to look at the correct lights? So the first thing we want to do is actually make sure we open up our attribute editor and properly name our V-Ray light select element. So right here you can see the default name for it. Uh, I'm going to make one for the key light. So what I'm going to type in up here is key light pass. Okay. And down here I'll type the same thing. Key light pass. Now the field up here is how it displays in Maya. The field down here under the extra V-Ray attributes is basically how the pass is going to get written out or the name of the pass. So what we'll do now is go in and tell this key light pass that it belongs to this light. And how do we do that? So we're going to go up to our windows. We want to go to our relationship editors and bring up sets. So right away when I bring up sets, you can see it says key light pass here, which is exactly what we named it over here. So I'll click on key light pass. And because I named my light correctly, it's very easy for me to quickly find the key light 
and I'll click on this. And now over here in the outliner, you can see we've got the key light paths. We have a relationship between these two. So we'll go back to our V-Ray frame buffer and I will re-render. Okay, so our render is completed. So we're going to go back to the V-Ray frame buffer and we're going to look at our passes and we can now see we have the key light pass has been included in addition to my GI lighting specular and reflection pass that I already had in here. So we'll select the key light pass and we can see now that it's just the key light just the light coming in from up and over here onto my object. Okay, So let's take a look more closely at what happened in the key light pass. So again, if we go back here and look at our lighting pass, we can see it's just the lighting contribution, but no specular. If we look at the specular pass, we can see it's all the specular contribution, but none of the lighting. So back to our key light pass, we can see that it's simply the key light, but it has both the light and the specular contribution coming in. Um, this might be fine for some purposes, but generally for production purposes, I will want to separate these things out. There's times I'm going to want the light dimmer and the spec hotter, um, so on and so forth, or vice versa. Uh, it all depends on what the client's asking for and the art direction of the shot. So what we're going to do is go back to our render elements and we're going to look down here uh, again under the extra V-Ray attributes where we named our key light pass and there's a type. So under type we have raw, diffuse, and specular. Um, we're going to just be dealing with diffuse and specular right now. There is a whole series of uh, different kinds of methodologies for using raw passes but normally I just use the diffuse and specular. So what I'm going to do is key this to diffuse and because I changed this I also want to change the name of these so I know what kind of pass I'm gonna get out so instead of just key light pass I'm gonna call it key light diff for diffuse and down here I'm gonna call this key light diff as well alright now we've already created a relationship between these so again if we go to the relationship or look at the sets these are already connected I've simply gone in and changed what type it is, i.e. what the pass is going to do. So what we'll do now is simply bring up our frame buffer and once again we're going to re-render. Okay, our render is completed. So again in the frame buffer we're going to now go back to our passes up here and look at key light diff. So we can see the specular is now gone. So comparing it to just the lighting pass, we can see it's very similar, except that it's just isolated the key light only. Again, if we look at our specular, we can see the contribution here, which does not show up in the key light diff. So how do we get the specular in now? So we go back to our render elements, and we have to create another light select element. So I'll create another V-Ray light select element. And since, again, this is the key light, I'm going to call it key light spec and down here I'll call it the same thing key light spec and under type we now change over to specular so uh, the thing to remember again we have to go back to the relationship editor again sets because we've created a new pass the key light spec we need to tell it which light it belongs to so we click key light spec because we properly named it and of course we properly named our lights it's very easy to find which one is related to who so I'll close the relationship editor again and once again now that we've got that new pass set up I will re-render again okay so our render is finished and we're gonna go back again to the V-Ray frame buffer and look at our passes so here's the diff pass that we had before and now we have our new pass which is key light spec so again you can see we've isolated the key lights specular and we've also isolated the key lights diffuse contribution so it's pretty obvious what we need to do now is we have to go through and set up a two light select passes per light that we have 
Uh, it's really easy to make mistakes when you're going through and doing this. Um, the common mistake that people mostly make is by forgetting to set the type or setting the type wrong or misnaming or forgetting to basically go in and uh, create the relationship editors and it costs time in rendering and troubleshooting mistakes. Uh, one of the things that I've done which is available at my website is I've basically gone in here and written a script that allows you to simply select the lights that you want passes created for. You run the script and it automatically goes through and creates the diffuse and specular pass for each one of the lights based off of the light name. So you can see now what I've got is uh, diffuse and spec for my fill, my key, and my rim. So we'll do one last quick render and see what all those look like. Okay, our render is completed. And if we go look at our passes again, we can see I got the key light diff and the key light spec that we had before. But now I have my fill light diff and my fill light specular and my rim light diff and my rim light specular. Um, now in theory I don't really need the lighting pass anymore nor do I need the specular pass but I actually like to keep them in my render set for when I go composite. Now the reflection cannot be broken out by the lights. Um, specular is how the light is actually hitting the uh, the object itself but the reflection is the older overall reflectivity of the object. Um, there are some gags to control the reflectivity using the lights with compositing, but that's a little more of an advanced tutorial. We won't go into that here. Um, but suffice to say, what you can get out for passes to control your lighting is your diffuse and specular contribution of the light. So once we have all these rendered out, how do we handle them? So uh, I use Nuke generally for production, uh, but all this works in Photoshop and in After Effects. And this is the beauty pass, as we can see here. So what I'll do is take a quick look in, and there's our light pass EXR. All right, and we have our just simple lighting pass here, and we have our specular pass. So generally, I love Nuke um, and working with V-Ray and Nuke specifically because it's very easy to merge all the layers together. They're all simple, straightforward pluses, as you can see here. Um, so again, we just look through. There's our diffuse light pass. There's our uh, for our, our rim light. There's our fill light, and there's our key light. Now the combined of all of these looks like this. And if I go do a quick A B against the other lighting pass, you can see that they are identical. So I use the lighting pass and the specular pass. So we'll look at the spec pass here real quick. So there's the combined spec passes, and there's my beauty spec. I use this as a quick double check to make sure that I've combined all my passes together correctly. For a scene as simple as this, it may not be necessary, but as you get more complex, you want to make sure that you've made no mistakes in your compositing. So basically how I like to work is I'll group all of my diffuse passes together. I will then go in and group all my specular passes together and then I merge both of those to create um, the combination. Uh, after that I will generally merge in my, as you can see down here, my global illumination pass and then I'll merge in my reflection pass which finally gives me the identical to the beauty pass. Okay, So you can see it's wonderful. We have a lot of nice controls here. Uh, if I go into the key light for example and drop a grade note in um, I can start playing with different things with the white point into the dark point, um, you know, work on the gain, the lift, basically dim dim lights or bring lights up. Uh, if I want specular to get up a little higher on that fill light, I can just simply go in here again. I'll drop a note on that and um, just start playing with the lifts and the gains on it to start until I see something that I like that I want to work with. Um, so, yeah, you get a lot of different controls with this. It's really handy. Uh, it's very worthwhile to understand how to use it, and that is about it. Uh, I hope this was useful. Um, oh, quick side note. Uh, this is my website, uh, disopolis.com, D-I-S-O-P-O-L-I-S. 
Uh, on this website, there is an actual walkthrough of the same tutorial I did here, which is the V-Ray Light. I call it the V-Ray Light Select Script. So you can walk through basically exactly what we've done here in the video tutorial. Uh, but more importantly, the script that I used to create um, the passes. So again, I'll just delete all these passes and show you again. I'll just collect, select my lights, as you can see here and I will run my script and it has created all the passes that I need. That script can be found here on the website. Here's the code. Um, it's free for anybody who wants to use it. You want to modify it or anything you want to do. But basically if you don't want to go through the trouble of using the re relationship editor and the set editor, um, simply go to disopolis.com, go to the V-Ray Light Pass script tutorial and feel free to download it. Um, or copy it and modify it, anything you'd like to do. I hope this was helpful, and thank you very much.